Hi, and welcome back to It's Okay to Be Wrong, a podcast with KB and Tanner Cunningham. Hi, happy Monday. How are you? Uh, it has big Monday energy today. Let me just start by saying... Actually, yeah, you start us off. What's going, what's well, going on with your Monday? You know, I went to Safeway this morning because we were in need of a rotisserie chicken. Yes. And get to the deli, and I see the lady who's working at the deli, and she comes by, and I'm looking for the rotisserie chickens. I'm not seeing them there, and I'm like, okay, no. They must be over somewhere else. So I'm about to leave. And she goes, hi, can I help you? And I was like, no, that's okay. Thank you. I'm just looking. Then I go and look for the rotisserie chickens. They are indeed out. Upsetting. <laughs> and so then I beeline back to the deli. Because I did see that they had some grilled like chicken breast and things. So I thought, well, we could maybe use that, right? Yeah. You're like, okay. Like, solution. If you don't have this, then I'll do this. Right. Giving solutions on this Monday. I love a solution-oriented <laughs> Monday. And um, so I'm like, okay, well, I guess I could use some of these chicken breasts. So the lady, again, who had helped me pre- or asked if I needed anything previously, she comes to me and says, you're back again. Literally was greeted that way. It's so rude. I was... Who I was that? actually dumbfounded. Well, customer service goes, you're back again. My jaw literally hit the floor when she said that to me. I'm like, yeah. No, literally. I was still like, here. yeah. I'm still here. And so she gives, she asked me what I would like. I asked, I tell her the grilled chicken breast. I would like three grilled chicken breasts, please. She proceeds to put them in the bag. She does not even seal the bag. I don't think she's going to say anything to me whenever she hands it to me, but she like mumbles under her breath. Here you go. Have a great day. So... Me, not letting her have the last word, of course. I had to say, I hope you have a great day, too. And your attitude gets better, bitch. So, there's that. That's now, how my Monday's that going. Was under your breath or just in your head the end? Mm, it might have been a both. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely in my head. And it, I didn't scream that part. I didn't scream at all. But I was just, I said, you too. And I hope your attitude gets better. Well, you know what? You know? I do. Because I was so mean. Like, why are you back here? Like, who says that? Oh my Hi, God, you're back again? I'm like, yeah, I'm a paying customer. Hello? Like, welcome back. Yeah, back so that's the kind of energy I've gotten. And then I was also, as I was leaving the said Safeway, I ran into three boys. I could, they clocked me. As soon as I was in self-checkout, KB, I, their eyes were on me. I was like, what do these boys want? They were like three, I would say anywhere from 16 to 20 years old and i'm like they they were just like 20 of them no there were three of them they were <laughs> aged <football> team. <laughs> <laughs> age 16 to, anywhere from 16 to 20 and so i see them like just staring me down and i'm like oh they're gonna say some shit to me whenever i leave oh yeah they are so i'm exiting and the main culprit who i would say is probably me in the scenario like in the group of friends like i was always the one who would like get put up to doing things right yeah how are you in friend groups was that ever your story were you the culprit or were you like the the one like telling people what to do? I don't know. It depended on the situation. <laughs> it depends. Okay. I was in so many different friend groups. Yeah. That it depends on like where I fit in each social hierarchy. Mm. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Like, and then you felt comfortable to do one thing or the other. Yeah. Yeah. So. But both. But I, both. People always knew I would do it. I'm like, I'll do it. No like, I just didn't have like a lot of like shame or embarrassment ever. I'd be like. Let me do it and see what happens. Yeah, no. Like, I'll why are y'all scared? Love that about you. Why are y'all scared? Why are you being so scared? <laughs> and so now I'm like, I'm scared. I'm scared all the time. Why are you scared? I'm always scared. <laughs> I I don't even like to bring up little things like. Yeah. I don't. I don't like you know like something that gives me stress like you know like say it's like about like something silly or like something with work like I don't like to break those things up but like I'm starting to do it even though like always don't feel the most comfortable but i'm just like you know what i can't be stressed out about something or if i don't say anything then like what's gonna happen so yeah no that's yeah. fair so, so this now little I'm boy of everything but i used to be fearless uh, fearless this little boy who was me in a past life too like previously he comes up to me his other two friends immediately turn around and start laughing because they are they, like, oh! yeah, they put him up to this he goes hey can i see your receipt i'm like yeah absolutely so i whip out my receipt and give it to him like we're at sam's and he's like perusing the receipt. I'm like, look good to your friend. He's like, yeah. So then he let me go. But that was fun. It was it was harmless. And so that kind of turned turned my Monday bad experience at Safeway into like a better one. I felt like, you know, these kids were trying to play a joke. They were just having fun. They were it was the end of summer. Like let right. them live. It's cool for the summer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get that. And sometimes you, yeah, I think sometimes it is fun. Like, just like a harmless adult, like prank. Now that we're a good seventy five year olds, <laughs> like we're the boomers, like mm -hmm. sitting in our rocking chairs on mm -hmm. our balcony every night. 
like now that that's where we are in life all i have to say is i love it and i love watching the kids i'm like oh my god they're about to do something so stupid this is gonna be fun to watch yeah no for sure (laughs) so that's how i feel i feel like a little encouragers of the so yeah and you know what that gives kids confidence for later in life so i'm glad you let them mess with you no totally it was all in good fun and it was harmless and whatever yeah, harmless fun. I'm like, I could see myself doing that as a kid, so like, I had to give them some grace, you know? Yeah. I didn't have it in me to go for grace. All right. What else have we been up to, though? Well, it was the weekend. Honestly, I was sick as a dog. Yeah, you weren't feeling the like, best. Like, I have a voice again. That was good. Yes. I was like crying while getting my nails done on <laughs> Friday night <laughs> at my own home, yeah. at my own kitchen table <laughs> by my husband. <laughs> No, I I'm was just, just like, painting was, through tears. No, literally, I wasn't feeling good. And I was just like, Tanner, I don't know what's the matter with me. Like, I was like, I have been off for like two or three days. Yeah. I was like, my stomach's been bothering me. Like, I know what that's about. Like, that's like pretty much like mitigated. Like, we're good. But like, I feel like my sinuses are falling apart. And I was like, I feel like, I was like, I, I was like, and I have to be somewhere next week, which is why it gave me so much stress. Right. And so I spent the whole day in bed on Saturday and it was so fabulous. And I barely did anything. My phone had a charge almost all day. It was crazy. (laughs) Things don't like that don't happen to me often. I usually start working at like 530 in the morning because we have a lot to do. And um, yeah, it's it was nice. You also got some like really beautiful flowers from Floor Fine Living Co. Shout out in Uh, Castle Rock. I did. I did. My sister sent me some flowers because she did. (laughs) You weren't feeling well. I wasn't feeling well yeah. and she was just being so sweet and she sent me flowers and they're literally lighting up our living room. Mm-hmm. They're in a vase that my grandmother gave to her mother-in-law, like my granddad's mother. Yeah. Um, and now that it's my vase and cup set and I love using it. It feels like very like sweet and like it feels like I get to know something about someone that I never met. So yeah. I and we make all of our Arnold Palmers in those cup sets. They're the best. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's been it's been good. Yesterday we worked a lot. We got a lot done. It was hair washing day. Oh, yeah. I did my yeah. eyebrows. I prepped good. a lot for going to LA next this week. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow. We did your toes. No, we did my toes. Like mm-hmm. we've done so many things that like Saturday we did nothing. Yesterday we did everything. We're back in the sink of doing everything. We'll be doing, doing everything for the next seven days. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. We're going to be in L.A. You'll be hearing us live from there. So shout out to Los Angeles. Um, a, a real tan. No, it's a gripe. A gripe that I have. Oh, what's the gripe? Listen, I was reading this statistic. Um, no, I heard a shocking statistic oh. that most like daily vitamins for kids or just adults in general for anyone. Right. Has at least anywhere from one to two teaspoons of sugar in them. And that's how we're jump starting our bodies. First thing in the morning, we're just like giving it sugar. That doesn't make any sense. Like, where's the FDA? Like, hello, what are we doing? How's that? How's that legal? Especially in kids gummies. Like, they don't let them have dyes and things. Why are we just giving them sugar? Um, this is America. That's true. Like, that's always my response (laughs) to like, why do we let things happen in our food? Um, yeah. And I say that like, not as a condescending way of like, this is America, but like, that's just normal in America. And while it's normal, it's corrupt. Mm -hmm. And like, if you go look at other people's like basic health standards, that's why 50% of Americans are obese. Well, just how we can even market things as like quote unquote healthy right? and like make it look healthy based on packaging or product mm-hmm. placement in a store is disgusting, despicable behavior. Always check the back of the box, babe. You have to. No, you have to check at the back of the box. You have to look at all the ingredients like, and like so many superfoods in quotation superfoods aren't superfoods. And what is a superfood? Like we've created so yes. many of these buzzwords and like. I do like, and I like, I'm like. i on a health journey right now. Like I'm fully mm-hmm. on a health journey. You're all about to see a lot about it. But yeah. like I started a GLP-1 medication oh, and yeah, yeah, like me it's telling you all, yeah. um, which is like part of why my stomach hurt a little bit last week. I was getting used to it. <laughs> sure. But also like, you know, like you're finding all these things. And so, you know, I, I say that as an American trying to like control her health, but like somebody who's always had trouble with my health, like mm. from like a child and like just knowing what goes in our food now and knowing what's processed, like we eat like fairly healthy, totally, like and mostly at home. And like, we know what ingredients go in our food and like that doesn't make it like not extremely hard. And I can't imagine being a parent and like yeah. having to go through all of that every day just to try and make conscious decisions like to put inside your body yeah and we know a lot of you out there have crotch fruit and so we're just warning you check the back of the box check the back of the box for you and your crotch fruit Um, we love them for you love them honestly and those of you that listen i love most of your kids (laughs) yeah truly shout out like shout out to the kids don't let them listen just kidding don't let (laughs) time and place words that's all i have to say (laughs) time and place words will be shared totally it's that kind of pod 
Um, so yeah, that's just kind of like my newest gripe. Like it's just so frustrating to me that we're allowing these things to be marketed as healthy and like we're jump starting a day with sugar. No, questionable. Check the label. Yeah. Check the and we do start our day with sugar, obviously with coffee. But you know what? I try and wait an hour or two before having my coffee, even with decaf. And I know you've started doing that also uh-huh. with caffeinated. Yes, I have. I almost had a full fledged panic attack before <laughs> on the last podcast. I'd like sucked down a coffee like right before because it makes a horrible clanking noise and so like I was like okay let me just get this out of the way like I gotta do this yeah and wow I thought I was having a heart attack I couldn't breathe it was crazy so yeah I've started that journey of just waiting at least an hour and like starting my day with water and not coffee and it's been good and that's something I do like to do I like to start my day with I try and drink water I don't always drink I normally don't drink a lot of water as soon as I wake up I'm just like around which I need to but like I do always try and start the day with daylight is like oh that's good too huberman vibes no it is it's very huberman vibes um start your day with daylight it helps your circadian rhythm that's it that's all big facts do you want to talk about the blips on our radar oh yeah should we let's get into the blips on our radar okay the blips on our radar Uh um the bachelorette star andy dorfman announces pregnancy congrats Congrats. andy andy is like one of the like more well-known bachelorette contestants okay cool um and that's really exciting now i don't know much about her story at all but um, we always love celebrating. We just talked about your crotch fruit. She's about to have a crotch fruit. Like, yeah. congratulations. Congrats. Like, what? Like, no, it's just so beautiful. Like, kids, like, hear me. Here am I changing my tune on the first day of school for some folks. <laughs> but, like, it's, yeah, kids are beautiful. Childbirth is such a cool experience. Like, it's once in a lifetime. I would not know about it. But, like, that's we've what heard, I hear. Yeah, we've heard that. That's from what I hear. People. And yeah. I hear it's also, like, right before then's your last moment alone. So, like, we love you. Good luck. Good luck, babe. Yeah, no, that's exciting for uh, her, I though. I mean, Bricks follows me to the bathroom, like, at 5.30 this morning. He woke <laughs> up. So, like, I feel your pain is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically a mother. <laughs> I'm basically a mother, not at all. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Um, Our next blip. Sheena Shea stuns in a black mini dress at the 73rd annual Miss USA pageant. This was hosted at the Peacock Theater in Los Angeles Sunday. Thoughts? You know what? I did see, my thought was, I didn't see a picture of Sheena there, but I did see people there supporting Sheena. <laughs> Oh, really? Like who? Um, I don't know. She had some people in the office. I think it was Lala. Oh, uh, like cast members. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah, she had okay. a couple cast members like join her in the audience. They like went to watch us. She like judged this. And the other thing I'll say is Rachel Lindsay, I think, was hosting it. So oh, no love. notes. Yeah, no notes. And you know what? They're going for gold. And she's good as, as gold. gold. That, the fact that that is not playing over our national anthem whenever we win gold at the Olympics, I'm no, upset still. Why has Simone not done a TikTok to it? Like, <laughs> Right? <laughs> no. It's like, you know, like so much. Sheena Shea is always, Sheena Shea is a culture creator. If Sheena For does sure. it, apples. A-P-P-L-E-S. Now, my apples rot right, right to, to the, the core. And Sheena just wanted a song about apples, dang no, it. It was Sheena's song It first. was Sheena's idea first. And I think the spelling is what took her out, though. I don't love a song that spells. No, Taylor Swift took the spelling out of her song, Me. Good. Um, within like a month of it being put up on YouTube, she took it out. Hey, kids, spelling is fun. But guess what? She always brings that stuff back. So me somehow in the future, that mark my words. It's the coming spelling back. will be brought back. Okay, we'll yeah. see. Congrats, Spe- Gina. Speaking of Taylor, mm-hmm. apparently our next blip, a fan think that Swift was sub to, uh, wait, no, she reacted after being name dropped on Kanye's Vulture 2. Thoughts? I did see that. Little Wayne was actually the person rapping. Oh. I think Kanye West already knows to keep Taylor. Taylor's name out of his mouth. And he yeah. continues to do that. And he continues to encourage others. Now, I do love Wheezy F Baby, like, so much. Like, yeah, definitely. my childhood. Did he say something bad? He just, I don't, honestly, I didn't understand the line. I'm oh, okay, not, that's fair. I'm not, as, I'm not as fully literate in, like, what, like, the language is. <laughs> But it was just basically like something like Taylor and we all Yeah, I'm like reading it too. It says, I twist my Taylor spliffs tight at the end like Travis Kels. Yeah, I spliff something because Travis is a tight end. But a spliff is like a mix of marijuana and a cigarette, I think. No? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I'm going to have to Google what a spliff is. No, like that's the reason. I was like, I didn't understand it. And (laughs) two, two of the, I just don't even know. What is this? What is it? Um. Yeah, it's a marijuana cigarette. Yeah. Look at me knowing things. Yeah, I like literally had no idea. I was like, I don't even know what this means. I've never smoked a ciggy. <laughs> yeah, and so I don't know what that actually means for that line, but it doesn't sound bad necessarily. It doesn't sound bad, but also like keep my name out of your mouth. Totally. Like once again, why are you using my name to sell your records? Right. 
Without Stop a doubt. using my name to sell your records. Lil Wayne doesn't need Taylor's name to sell his own records. Kanye doesn't need Taylor's name to sell his records. So stop using my name to sell your records. That's it. That's all. Cool. I like it. Our next split, Cuba Gooding Jr. is turning to Christ after years of scandalous headlines. He premiered a new Christian movie in the Hamptons. Now, isn't he the one who allegedly stuck his finger up our favorite podcaster, Tony Lou's butt? Absolutely. And it's I, so. Anyone, like, <laughs> he needs to turn to Christ. He needs to turn to Christ. Number two, though, I, I just wonder something bad. Like people, in quotations, I, I'm not here to explain anyone else's religious experience. And sure. like, we we celebrate you here. We co we coexist with you. Like, no matter what your religion or like your belief system mm -hmm. is. Like, I'm not here to harp on that. Like, this is not that type of podcast. Like, no. whatever takes you higher, may it be. Go. And yeah. Most people, when they turn to Christianity, usually just did something wrong. So, like, what's about to bad about to come out happened to him? Shia LaBeouf, a few years ago, like, after he got in all that trouble and then, oh. like, got caught doing drugs, all that, he's like, I turned to Jesus. What does Jim Carrey do? He turns to Jesus. And they go back to, like, their regular lives. Well, um, and he has a Christian movie coming out. So, I'm like, okay, sir, we're being media literate and, like, we're reading through the lines here. We Did you turn to Christ for this movie? Did you turn to him for this movie? Is that the only deal you get? Because Christian influencing makes a lot of money. They do. Like was approached about like going to like this christian film and it was like a couple hundred dollars just to go sit through the movie and i was like mm -hmm. i hate sitting through movies that sounds like a horrible time to me like i cannot sit through the movie for you i, I cannot like sitting through a movie for two hours i could have taken a two-hour nap tour. though yeah like we missed we missed a brand deal because i wouldn't go sit through a christian movie sorry uh, i would have definitely taken a nap <laughs> that is so rude you should have ran that across my desk <laughs> i would have signed that so i'm just saying like i don't know like is this a part of like that whole piece of it it's mm -hmm an interesting timeline with just like mm. politics and everything else slash like the Diddy timeline slash right. like slash he's everything. like very involved with the Diddy timeline. Yep. Very involved. And like, let me also be clear. I don't think, that's, I think Diddy is just like the face that they're oh, yeah. punching on this. I think totally. it's so much bigger than him. He's just like, once again, the fall guy. I mean, did he do things wrong? I'm sure. But also the fall guy. It's much bigger than him. Cuba Gooding's all in, all wrapped up in that. That's what I mean by what's coming out about Cuba Gooding. Mm. Big facts. Our next split, Real Housewives, Real Housewives of New Jersey likely won't resume filming until 2025 as producers try and figure out the reboot plans. Um, I love a reboot. I think they need a reboot. We did watch Jersey last night. Great yeah. episode. It was great. It was a great, honestly, great finale. I don't need to see anything else from them because like, we are all left with questions. Mm. Yeah. That's how you like the Vanderpump finale. No, that's true, actually. It's like the ending of a good book. Like You don't get like, Right. It doesn't always get Danielle tied and Jen, up. She almost choked her out. She just sat at the table at the end. We don't know what happened. <laughs> no. Teresa and Emma almost checked her out. Like she literally, she went over at the table. Okay. Like, uh, yeah. Who hasn't flipped a table? Like that's literally Teresa's move. Yeah. That's like, Teresa. When Teresa's like, that. let's not get violent. I'm like, you started this. Ma'am, you are the violence. Yeah. You actually started this. <laughs> like no offense. No, for sure. But like, so yeah, I don't know. I I would love the idea of a reboot for them. I think that'd be a great opportunity. I think these women could go on a girls trip, a select few of mm, them in mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. um, I think the right people need to go. But honestly, it hurts my ears to hear the F word bleeped out every two seconds totally. on a TV show because you all cannot converse in a normal tone or without saying the F word every three seconds. And like, that's fine. I love the F word as next Absolutely. as the next person. And I, I hate that I can't watch TV without you. Just it's like not enjoyable. It's, yeah. yeah, it's no fun. It's no fun to watch people argue all the time. I think that's why Dubai has such a nice balance right now is people are arguing, but it's also silly. And like we can't watch people argue every second of the day. It's just getting old. Now, could we bring back Danielle as like a friend of because I really do like Danielle. Danielle is so fun. And I do. I do think Danielle can be brought back in like small acquaintances and or she could just like she had her own commercial last night. So like who knows where Danielle's going? OK, well, that's fair. Yeah. Our last split, French pole vaulter Anthony Bulge cost him Olympic gold medal, and I can guarantee this is not the first time his dick has stopped him from winning gold. <laughs> okay, so do you know what this means? Like, a, f a pole vaulter. Do you know what that is? Yeah, a pole vaulter. Yeah, I knew a girl in college. She was on the pole vaulting team. You oh, jump yes. over a thing. Yeah, you use a stick, and, like, you run with that stick and, and then put you it into the ground. And then you hoist yourself up over a bar. Yeah, and then you hoist your body up over a bar. It's part of track and field. Exactly. And as he was coming down, like, he had fully cleared the bar, right? Mm -hmm. But as he was coming down, he was too close to it in the front. And so his, his bulge literally popped the bar and popped it off, and he didn't win gold because of it. <laughs> 
he's got to know where his bulge sits <laughs> with the bar. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, that sucks. Cost him from winning gold. But it will cost you if you knock the pole off. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Skims was your underwear. Like, was this not the Skims approved underwear is my question. Well, like, but did he not have his compression undies on? He might not have. And that, that really cost him gold. Right. Like, you have BDE to. BDE too big. Right. No, literally. <laughs> Me will lose you gold. It will. Yeah, you got to be careful. It's kind of crazy, though, that they can fully, like, be upside down and flip themselves, like, 100. I don't know how right. tall and it is in the like, air. A piece of your body, like, ruins your chance at gold. That sucks. I no. have to say, like, I understand how much this sucks. No, it's so funny, though. Like, that's kind of iconic, though. Like, it, worse things could be written about me in the press, I'll be honest. No, literally. Like, I'm sure there is a slew of people knocking on his door. Yeah, if he doesn't have an OF yet, he probably should get one started. Oh, I don't know if that was a person that I got there. I know. Someone asked us recently if we had an OF, and KB was like, so dumbfounded. And I was like, no, we don't. I was like, what's that? Only fans. <laughs> well, I know what it is now. Yeah, but no, like, I was telling the people that if they yeah. didn't know. No, in the in the message, I was like, I don't even know what this means, Tanner. And he was like, what do you mean you don't know what this means? <laughs> Y'all, I tell you, I'm either a 75-year-old perverted man <laughs> or I am a 14-year-old girl who doesn't even know doesn't if know she's anything. had her first period. Like... <laughs> Like, there's no in-between here on, yeah. like, my knowledge scale. <laughs> no, totally. That's fair. And that's how I feel most of the time, too. But, um, yeah, no, we do sell our bodies on the internet, just not in that way and with OnlyFans. No, so. we don't sell it on OnlyFans. But, yeah, I've gotten <laughs> two questions about that recently, actually. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know what this means. We don't know. We don't know. Should we give them the rhyme of the day? Let's give them the rhyme of the day. Okay, let's do it. There's not enough time to play. It's Period. time to do the rhyme of the day. He's maybe out here yachting. Oh. And the rest of them are out there applauding mm -hmm. all this today on the couple's couch. Oh, it's not the couple's couch. It's okay to be wrong. <laughs> it's, it's literally okay, okay to be wrong. Y'all, I just got into it. It takes a new, like the science behind making a new habit. Like we're not to six weeks yet, but we're close. We're close. We're coming up on it. But yeah, I oftentimes do that slip as well. But yeah. fun. Um, Tell so me the stories, Gorge. Our first story is we're going to keep going with the Olympics. I love US, the Olympics. I know. It's been so good. U.S. swimmer Bobby Fink wins men's 1500 meter gold, setting a world record. Now, there were questions about this pool even being able to set records because of the depth. Now, it has something to do with like the, the waves that are generated from the swimmers' bodies and things yeah. like that. So this was really cool. I, what I loved about this, too, is that Bobby was talking about he had been reading all of the articles and like he knew like this was on him to win gold for the men. Like he was their, their only shot at winning an individual gold. And oh. he did it. That's he amazing. He persevered. And I'm like, yes, Bobby, because you can get in your head about stuff. And then, like, mm -hmm. that can be the thing that, like, takes you out. But, no, he said, I'm going to win and also set a world record. Right. Like, I'm good enough. Like, yeah, there's a, there's such a difference of perspective when you go from all the way to the world is setting on me. And, like, I have to do this mm -hmm. to being, like, I'm the most equipped person to do this. And, like, my team is behind me. Yes. And, like, we're going to do this. But it's I need them to shut up and set. let me do yeah, it. Sure. And all this. Like, yeah. uh-huh. But, like, it is. It's uh, so much about changing perspective. I have to coach myself up all the time. Like, and like, I'm like, am I smart enough to do this? And I'm like, yes, I'm the smart person in this room about this. Like, and like no, totally. trust yourself more. So like as somebody that has trouble trusting herself, but I'm leaning into it more every day. Mm -hmm. Trust yourself, people. Bobby did and he won gold. No, literally. You can win gold. And know your data. Know your data about yourself. Know, know your data. Know your data. Or is it data? data? Data. Who knows? Doesn't matter. Who could say? Potato, potato. Either way you spin it, your dad cooks it. So facts. Somebody said that to you. Raven Simone once and I was rude it was on that's a Raven <laughs> that one stuck with you I literally have talked about it on the podcast before I know yeah <laughs> <laughs> mm. so I shout out that burn. sick burn sick burn shout out to Bobby for winning gold as um you know just an icon does Bobby's junk did not get in his way and he did win gold this year true his his skims were tighter than um Mr. Frenchman's I would hope so he was in swimming attire <laughs> Oh, Zach Efron went to Ibiza. Is this about okay, the yachting? Okay, listen, I have a lot of questions. KB, a couple of nights ago, comes to me and says, someone's out here yachting. I'm like, no, I love when people are on a boat. That's like iconic. Like, I can't wait for it to be me. And she's like, no, you can. Like, you don't understand what I mean. Would you like to explain what yachting okay, means? Okay, So I got on, I was on the deep, 100% world of truth, mm. TikTok. Yeah, obviously. Like, Where we get all of our new sources. It's never been wrong. <laughs> it's not based out of opinion or conspiracy mm, or speculation. Nope. I just want you to know that. Yep. And this is all alleged. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I was on TikTok the other day watching my little videos, and yeah. this guy was like, Zach Efron's out rotting right now, so is Naomi Campbell. And I was like, not Naomi Campbell. Because I've knew, I've heard about what yachting is. What is it? So yachting is when like you as a person, like say Zach Efron. Okay. He's going out on these yachts Allegedly. with billionaires this summer. All alleged. Uh-huh. All alleged here. Uh-huh. But say a person's going out on this yacht with billionaires and you're like, also like, you not only are you laying in the sun together, but you might be laying in their beds together. And that's where oh. a lot of folks mm. make a lot of money. And like the actually like Hollywood is one big cover up for the adult entertainment industry. And a lot wow. of that, like I can. It kind of correlates. I can, it, it very much correlates because like what sells sex. Without a doubt. Who backs these big money things. Like these movies and uh-huh. things like that. Yeah, of course. And so like, honestly, like I heard like all this is like. <laughs> all alleged conspiracy like i don't know like nobody's gonna be like yeah here's my nda on yachting you know right but like it's 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 alleged it's shared that like they do movies so they can have like a bigger name in yachting and yachting actually makes their more of their money and zac efron's money apparently comes from yachting not from his movies i don't know (laughs) Okay. No, I mean, I haven't seen him in movies. Kardashians are I, said to be quite the yachters. I was going to say, I've seen Kylie on a lot of li- yachts lately, and I heard she's having money problems, so it all kind of makes sense. No, and allegedly. like you go, and like you can, I don't know if it is like OF. You see what right. I'm there? Uh-huh, and it's like, you know, if it's like, you know, you, it's just like your company, mm. or if it is like, do you have to exchange things? And like, we respect sex workers here. Oh, so for like, sure. Yeah, but like, however you get your cash, like, that's up to you. But and it sounds I'm like you're on a yacht. Like, I mean, it sounds pretty good. Yeah. So I don't know. But like I did hear that like yachting is something that happens a lot, especially in the summer. It's a great way to make money, but it's also like the best way to boost your next success to your film. film and, and like, like that also like to keep getting films. Yeah, literally. Mm-hmm. Wow. Interesting. I mean, it, m- it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense all at the same time. Sure. Like, like you could so see it, but of also you're like, okay. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Or like, oh my gosh, these people are so deranged. And so, yeah, yachting. Yachting. Well, yada yada is, yada 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 yada. Um, someone who might be yachting. We mentioned Zac Efron. He actually just spoke out. He was hospitalized in Ibiza, Spain, um, following like a incident at a villa in a swimming pool. Apparently, two people had to pull him out of oh. the pool, and then he went to the hospital. Now, whenever asked about it, he his reps just continued to say it was just as a precaution-like thing. Like, he wasn't hurt in the incident, allegedly. He just um, passed out in Ibiza doing, I don't know what, like, I don't know what you're doing. I he hear what you pool? do. I hear what you do in Ibiza. What? Drugs. So, like, that makes oh. sense why he would be, like, oh, in a I pool. Oh, in Ibiza. Yeah, is it Ibiza? I don't know how you say it, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know how you say it. I was just We've never been. To say something, I was cool. Well, and Kim Kardashian just recently said that the only time she ever, or not the only time, but the last time she did ecstasy was with Paris Hilton in Ibiza. Ibiza? Yeah. I don't know how you say it. I don't know how you say it exactly, so we're sorry. We will figure that out. Yeah, we'll figure because it out whenever someone pays for us to go it, there. And it sounded wrong, but I think we were just wrong. Mm. It's very American of us to so be like, American. you're wrong. And it's like, it's my country. <laughs> not yours not yours so he posted to to his instagram happy and healthy thanks for the well wishes with him working out on a little medicine ball shirtless Shirtless. on a deck on a deck yeah maybe they're all yachties i mean maybe they're all just like um maybe they're maybe he works for below deck and we just don't know it too oh i haven't seen him on the screen you know maybe that's actually the yachting because you know what you do make like two thousand dollars a trip like just being like a okay but i'm with a billionaire and like I'm doing these things. I'm making more than two grand. No, I'm just saying, like, what if he's, like, secretly on, like, below deck med and he's just never pictured? <laughs> he's like, I got to make this 2000 quick. I'm just kidding. Obviously not true either. I'm just being facetious. Facetious. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor. Do you want to go to the next one? <laughs> that transition I loved. Yeah. Let's um let's go to our next story. Um Elizabeth Taylor says that her father called her a whore for affair with Richard Burton. Now this all came about about a hundred years ago. It was in the sixties, whenever she was filming the movie Cleopatra. You can be my jailer. Burton, Burton to, to this Taylor. Taylor. Exactly. Every lover before will be it's basically considered a failure. That's the line. Um yeah. So this all happened whenever she was starring in Cleopatra with her co-star Richard Burton they were both Mm -hmm. married at the time and it came out that they were having an affair and her father was very upset called her a whore the Catholic Church had a really weird take they said that her children should be taken away from her question mark who gets to say this also I'm like when we know what you do it's a weird take yeah no it's just like it's weird um what was your take on it fully who's it giving 
Mm, it's giving Billy Ray Cyrus yeah. calling Miley um, the devil. That whore is a devil, or that slut is a devil. I think is no, the word to use. No, it's just like who who says that one about their? Kid? I'm so glad we've come this far in like society and as a culture. Also, like Hollywood's just like it's a whole other like beast, and I can't even imagine what it was like back then because right. of just like everything going on and gender roles and i'm not sure and you don't know and maybe she was just method acting like why are you not respecting her craft no literally she was was supposed to be having sex with this man in the movie so she's like oh hey i gotta make life imitate art like get off of her dick being this young as art hello i'm making all this about taylor swift right now (laughs) no um liz taylor like her daddy saying that to her hate Rude. it but this all came about because of the hbo doc which we just saw on our screen we I didn't did watch say I it. Watch it though, yeah. yeah so i think we should this is like our first foray in so we'll I probably like, watch that yeah i really like um a documentary i'm fascinated by liz taylor she's beautiful there's lots of also rumors about liz taylor and mm. like this even being a lavender marriage and so mm. like i'm even more interested yeah um yeah i'm just i'm always interested in like the private lives of hollywood the private <laughs> feel lives. so It feels so. It does. Yeah. And just like secretive and like you never really know the truth. You see what they want you to see and um, it just is what it is. Yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah. But the pictures of those two together, stunning. No, really pretty. Yeah. We should recreate. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, something we should not recreate mm-hmm. being released from ICU. So Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt's son Pax was released from ICU. You know what he did not do? He didn't get up from his motorcycle accident and go woo like the woo. man we saw. <laughs> I know that was so funny. If you don't listen to that episode, go back and listen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it says he faces a long recovery after suffering complex trauma in a crash, um, but a strange dad remains frozen amid ugly divorce. Yeah, he was on an e-bike and I believe he like s- hit the back of someone's car. So. Yeah, that'll do it to you. Like, you yeah. went on to, like, head-on collisions. I, all I have to say out there is, like, we wish you well and, like, lots of recovery. Like, who doesn't hit people when they're young? And so we just say, like, young drivers, if you're listening to this, like, turn it off. Yeah, turn it <laughs> Focus off. Focus on the road. <laughs> please, please protect um, the people on the road and please turn this off. protect the people on the road. Put your phone down. Like, there's just so many things that, like, we don't have to do. Like, let's just be safe on the road. Um, and we hope that like he's safe on the road, but like not to say he wasn't safe before accidents happen all the time. That's what I'm just saying. Be aware. Yeah, no, definitely. This next story, it really struck a chord with me. It's like kind of one of my worst fears. Oh, what is it? Rapper T.I. was mm-hmm. arrested mistakenly because at the, at the Atlanta airport, because they thought he had the same name as this person who, um, apparently had like hit someone and like been violent and maybe had a gun um his name is clifford harris irl mr ti that's his actual government clifford harris and so he was mistakenly arrested and immediately it hearkened me back this actually happened to someone in our family this did happen to someone in our family y'all this has happened before and like you can google it it's my worst nightmare like, I can't give you the details, but this has happened to my aunt before. Yeah. Like, and before, I mean, like, within the past five years. I won't go into, like, all the details all the deets, because, yeah, like... It's literally happened to yeah, our Yeah, this has happened to my family, like... You know what got him out, though? What? <laughs> Did he rap? You can have whatever no. you like. Clifford Harris, the the one that was actually wanted, he weighed 205 pounds. T.I. reportedly only weighs 165, so skinny legend. No, literally. I was like, you ha- there has to be differences. And that was the difference between like the person in my family. It was like, they were completely different age ranges. They didn't even like <laughs> look them up. I'm like, look at these people before like you incarcerate them. Also, uh, to black men, even more. Like yeah, the, the, for le- sure. the person in my family, like at least like we had power involved. Like, you know, I know yeah. that there was like privilege there and like also things like just like who's in my family no. and yeah, yeah like no he got his lawyer on the phone and he was released within two hours he was like you have the wrong person release him now like this is going to be bad for you because you yeah, all look it's dumb y'all look yeah so you look stupid. so dumb you're arresting ti like and like again if it's a weight thing like why were you not looking at ti's license like yes the name matches but hello kids we're about a 40 pound difference here that's not okay listen my weight changes from across years <laughs> from licenses i will say but also like get the right people no for sure get the right people like this is not okay it's not okay he was just at the airport living his life do you think he'd be out at the airport if he was like <laughs> he was running com- from like, the law literally. no no that's not really not how this works also like check it like ch- check your people check to see, even see if they look like i'm sure they don't no I'm sure they don't and this is like once again like 
the justice system towards black men. The law is lawless sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. But it has happened in my family. <laughs> it has, I know. And it's like one of my worst fears. Whenever I heard that happen, like it became my top fear in life. I know. And I'd be like, which name? I've had so many. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, I'm like, who's getting arrested? We don't know her. <laughs> no. She's, she Who doesn't... is that bill too? We don't that, know them. We don't know that person <laughs> anymore. They really don't even know them. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we did do some advice from the DMs. We had a kind of long episode last time, so we kept it short and cute and quick, but we're going to give you some more. Should we dive into some additional advice from the DMs? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. So, should I do it? Yeah, you read it. So the subject is lending money to a sibling. Oh, I already have questions, comments, and concerns. (laughs) (laughs) Dear, it's okay to be wrong. My sibling has been going through a tough financial time, being laid off, going through divorce, and has asked me for a substantial loan around $10,000. Dear Mm -hmm. God. That's, I'm that's like, I don't have it. Like, no, that's literally. literally my first advice is don't got it. Don't have it. I want to help, but I'm worried about lending them the money. It might strain our relationship, especially if they can't pay it back. Should I lend them money and risk a potential fault, or should I find another way to offer support? Mm. Okay, when I first think about this, so 10K, I've never been asked for this much money. No. I have been asked for like a couple hundred dollars before. Sure, which is like, <laughs> that's like a normal yeah, two, number to ask for. You know, like yeah. people have asked that, like I've shared. And I view it like sharing. If well, sharing you get it back, so I don't view it as sharing. No, no, I, I well then I view it wrongly. I don't view it that way. Then how I view it is like if I, you I view it in the way of like you expect to like never receive it back, Period. like almost as a gift. Yes. And so like if you have ten k to give as a gift and know that like they can do this, then like great. But like I view borrowing money from a family member or friend as basically a gift gift, yeah it's almost a gift like you want to get your money back yeah you you set up like things to get your money back and it's very plausible that it's not going to happen yeah you just have to if yeah if you have the 10k to give like again i would have questions like is this happen often like what is it for like okay Mm -hmm. but also Yes, expect to never see that 10K again. If you have it to give, like, let go, let go of that money and just expect to probably never see it right. again. Right. Also, like, do you want a contract with it? Like, there's just so many things you could do. Like, True, you could do a contract. You could put it in a contract. In writing, yeah. Like, there's so many things you could do. But then you're going to sue right. your brother or sister whenever they don't pay you back. No. No. Like, it's awkward. So, but I, but I would, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, money, money of that substantiality, I, we'd have to, like, sit down and talk about, like, ways that we could probably offer alternative support because I don't have 10K to give you. Now, if I had multi millions, then I'm sure I'd give you the 10K. Yeah, like if money was no object, 10K is probably like, yeah, okay. Yeah. A Tuesday. But yeah, it's just like that's a lot of money and that's a lot to give away. And so, yeah, I just always think like, what are you doing like in your relationship? Like, is your relationship already strained? Do y'all have a long term? How do they usually do on paying back their debts? Like, do they usually have like, and if that's the case, like, could we help them figure out like something like with a HELOC? But also if you have 10K lying around, like we are also a very um, good source to throw that money at. Yeah, if we also (laughs) need 10K. So like if you want to like donate with donate without hesitation, like... Please don't hate donate. Okay, ten k for us. Ten k viewers. Ten k all day. Followers. Ten mm-hmm. k thousand dollars. Yeah. All the ten k's were there for you. Ten k all day. I love it. Yeah, that's our advice. Like, if you have it to give, like, communicate clearly with them. Set some boundaries. Like, expect to probably not see it again. But like, good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck, babe. <laughs> Our Oof. next advice from the DM. I hate that. I literally what? hate money. I hate being involved with money. Like, oh, yeah. Money with family is just like so sticky already. Yeah, it's just a mess. Or friends or anyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. like. Yeah, I don't like to do it. I'm just like. Nyeh. Yeah. So. Immediately bellyache. I'm like curl up and cringe. Yeah, immediate bellyache. Um, our next advice question. Dear, it's okay to be wrong. My boyfriend and I have been together for about a year now, and overall, we're really happy. However, we've hit a bit of bump in the road when it comes to how we handle our relationship on social media. He loves to share our life together online, photos, status updates, and some personal details about our relationship. I value our privacy. Oh, I didn't expect that. And would prefer to keep some aspects of the relationship out of the public eye. She, I've tried to talk to them about this, explaining that she wants to be more mindful of what he shares, but he feels it's a way to celebrate their relationship. She's worried that this agreement might become a bigger issue if it's not dress, addressed properly. Like, what should she do? Okay, so... Send help. <laughs> literally send help. Um, usually don't hear it this way of like... Right. It's usually like more of like... The typically, girls. yeah. Like females typically are the ones like sharing more on the internet, just like literally by consumerism. Like, yeah, definitely. We consume more on the internet. Like, 
And so, like, I wasn't expecting to hear it that way. Uh, my first thought is, like, what what makes you feel that? Like, I just want to be like, why are you feeling this way? Well, he said he likes to celebrate the relationship. Or are you asking her I'm why? asking her. Like, what, what makes you, like, what is it about this? So, oh, that like, makes you, like, uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. And, like, you figure that out. And, like, I don't need to know this to give you advice. Like, but, like, you figure out what makes you feel uncomfortable and, like, sit down and have a conversation with them about it. Yeah. And, like, determine, like, what what do you want to share with him that makes you uncomfortable? Is it something that actually, like, you want to work on personally? And, like, you know, like, maybe that's not for him to carry, but, like, he needs to help, like, respect you during that time. And, like, anytime you're putting something out on the Internet, I do believe in getting the permission of the other person. Yeah. Like, even with you, it's not like I sit here and get permission from you of, like, oh, can I do this? But, like, you give me okays on, like, a lot of the pictures that we post. And, honestly, Tanner posts half the things that come across your desk from Cunningham Graham, and it's okay to be wrong. Like, I'm always the one, like, responding in the comments and responding in your messages. But, like, Tanner sets up, like, all of our posting. Uh And so, like, he checks with me, too. I think it's just, like, a very much, like, a mutual consideration thing about what you put out there. And we actually didn't put that we were in a relationship for a long time. That's like, true. And by a long time, it's like all relative because like we got married in like nine months. All relative. All relative. And like we didn't like share with the world for like the first two or three months that we were dating. Yeah. And then we're like, oh, yeah, we're getting engaged. LOL. But we didn't share that for two weeks either. So it's like I think you all need to decide when and how you want to share things. And like if that is a boundary crosser for you, then like you have to share that. Yeah, and I think it's totally fair and fine to reiterate, like, why you feel this way. Like, speak to someone about it. Speak to him about it. But also, like, it seems like they're, like, really different people. So I'm kind of – I know you said your relationship's really good. So shout out. Love that. Mm-hmm. You've been with him for about a year. But, like, if it's going to be that different, like, I do understand what she's meaning. Like, is it going to escalate to something in our lives? Like, it could be a bigger thing. It's not just about the social media. It's, like, he overshares. And, like, maybe whenever they're out to dinner, like, he – says something he shouldn't with her friends and like embarrasses her like oh, and that so, is so annoying. maybe break up with Taylor him is my advice from the beginning just like advice advice mm-hmm. like it's not that we like there's just some things all things that like we know what's on the table like we have our non-negotiables yeah that like things we are don't not meant talk for everyone. about like with other people. Like, right. Like we're not speaking about our finances with anyone other than an accountant or like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, hello. Like, yeah, I'm not sharing with you about like pieces of our personal life. Like some things are just for you. And I think you all need to have like very clear boundaries on that. Mm-hmm. And if you all like are if he's crossing boundaries there from the beginning, then yeah, you need to be like, okay, like here are my other boundaries. What yeah. do you feel comfortable with? Like is he with? respecting you, babe? I don't know. Right. Like, because like honestly oversharing is so annoying. Tanner and I don't like, sh- like at dinner sometimes I'm like, if they ask about this, this is all I'm comfortable to share. And he'll be like, yeah. okay, great. Like, totally. Like we'll go in with like pre plan, like, like, like if boundaries. this comes up, like this is like what we would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because like, you never know people are rogue and will ask some wild stuff. People always ask for wild stuff. And like we do like boundaries are healthy, like get some. Yeah. And no, like great. either he can have boundaries around like what you're willing to share on social media. Cause once again, social media is permanent. Once you put out there, it's out there, babe. So yeah. I get it. I get her hesitation. I do too. Especially if it's like personal details, like yeah, no, it's too much. Also, I think men oversharing on the internet's gross. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, I'm like, I'm I've like, completely I'm changed at, my tune. No, I'm looking Dump at him, him. funny too. No, that's literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's a little strange that he's like love bombing you, in my opinion. So I would look into that. No, there's one guy on the internet <laughs> from where we are from. Yeah, and he's always posting things, and I'm like, did your wife? No, this? she didn't. Well, she. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I'm always like, did you write like this? Did this? she write this to us? No, I hope so. <laughs> Blink twice. We know you. Blink girl. twice if you hear me. Mm-hmm. Mackenzie. <laughs> not That's her not name. her name, obviously. <laughs> we would not do that. <laughs> yeah, I would never. Um, it's not her name or anything like it. But it's not yeah. even close. Yeah. I would just like, yeah, that's my biggest question is like, does he respect you? Yeah. Does and you've only been together you? for about a year. Sharing. He's not respecting your boundaries. Mm-hmm. He's like posting about you all the time online. It's giving love bombing. I don't like it. Yeah. Like I don't if, like it. Like, if I do do something, I'm like, ugh. Like, the other day, like, I and uh, I was, they were just, how'd you sleep? And I was like, Tanner kicked me, and he was so annoying. <laughs> and then. Wouldn't stop snoring. <laughs> he wouldn't yeah. stop snoring. Like, that's what I'm sharing to people. <laughs> right. About not, like, our serious, like. Yeah. yeah. it's, like, silly stuff. And then, like, I'll tell him. I'm like, I talk shit about you today. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I love it. Tell I'm me like, more. I'm like, you didn't let me sleep. <laughs> And that's usually the only reason I talk shit about Tanner is when he doesn't let me sleep. That's so fair. <laughs> yeah. I would talk shit about me too. No. So that's like, that's my advice. Dump him. 
dumped. No, literally dumped. He's dumped. He's dumped. No, but in all actuality, you can either dump him or just like y'all need to have a boundaries conversation. And, and you, you already need- did, and like he's still not doing it. So I yeah, I would cut out, your losses. Weigh out what you need, but like, girl, a year, it's okay. Like, there's so much life left to be lived. It gets greater later. Like, Period. yeah, there's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> plenty of fish.com. No, literally. Check it out. Okay, our next advice from the DMs is, dear, it's okay to be wrong. My boyfriend and I have been together for three years and we have a strong, supportive relationship. Whoa, the notes just went wild on me. Sorry, fam. It went all the way down to the bottom. Hold on. Sorry. Where is it? Okay, here we are. Okay, so they have a strong... Three years, guys. They've been together for three years, have a strong, supportive relationship. Recently, I was offered an incredible job opportunity that would require me to move to a different city. This role is a significant advancement in my career and something that I've always aspired to. The issue is my boyfriend's job and family are deeply rooted in our current city. He's expressed that moving would be a huge disruption for him and worried about the impact of his career and personal life. He's also concerned about how a long distance relationship might affect our connection. They are torn. Should they do the career thing? You know, do they jeopardize the relationship? They've talked about it extensively. I hear a little long winded friend. Um, What steps can. Okay. Yeah. What should they do? Um, I am not the best for this. Why? Because you've always bended for my career. I've always ended your career? Bended. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what? You've okay, always yeah. been willing to bend for my career yeah. and my dreams. Totally. And which has also helped you figure out your own path and dreams. Absolutely. But yeah. like my first, my first thought is leave him. <laughs> I can break up. Like, if you write in to us, just know the chances are good that we'll say break up. (laughs) Literally leave him. (laughs) No. I'm like, um, if he's not worshipping your individual toes, or if they're not worshipping your individual toes, like, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, we love. Like, we're obsessed, we love you, we see you, we celebrate you. Mm -hmm. And if the person you're with is not celebrating your individual toes, like, you're the prize, and, like, I don't get it. Also, um... Tanner was never leaving Kentucky and then he moved and we weren't together, but like, I'm just saying like, bring it up again. You have this new job. You have the opportunity. Have like, you talked about it since new opportunity. Like you were no offense, really long winded. No, I know literally. So like, I couldn't tell it was hard for me to like, to decipher if you brought it up since the move. Like if it, when it was just an option, they haven't moved is what I gathered from. Yeah. But have you brought it up since you got the new job? They haven't accepted the new job. Yeah. So I'm just saying like, should they accept the new job and move or, and try long distance like long distance i've seen people do it honestly people that i know like and are married and happily married to this day they did like a whole year of long distance and it worked for them and i just believe like you can do what you like you put in so i think there's just lots of expectations and like i think a lot of expectations and like things need to be set up so you can be successful but i say do it no for sure like try it like what like and if they if it doesn't work then like they weren't meant for you or they'll come back to you yeah or i really believe like what's meant for you will always come back to you yes and so like if this job is something you're wanting and like you are just like i mean and it's an achievement like do the job do the job keep the relationship and set up like what does it look like for communication y'all need to talk through that like you're not going to be communicating or living together or like doing the same things as you are what does it look like to meet up like do you meet up once a month who has to come exactly. first yeah. like he needs to come first he needs to come the first few times no he needs to come you. and help you set up because if because not you're already break up with him job mm-hmm. but like and then like six months in three months in like you'll know day by day yeah. like how it's going to work out you're just gonna and have like, to be really open and communicate and they're like i didn't feel this today i missed you like okay what right. did you miss about me like tell like tell me those things because like also i believe like distance can make the heart grow fonder like i mean i do leave for a week at a time sometimes and come back on the weekends and like those weeks are some of like our best weeks because like we haven't been up under each other totally and it's like you know like sometimes space is good and space can also give you things to weigh out because like if you don't want to live in this town forever and if he's not willing to move with you then like now's the time to try it you're not getting any younger no and like and like we want you to have what you want now like that's always what i want for people is for people to have what they want and to have options and so like i say try it yeah come close your career also like i never believe in settling like your career for like another human being Mm. especially a man yeah now come close girl or man whoever wrote this in if you don't take this job i'm gonna be mad 
I'm Elvis, not going to be okay with it. You have to. Like, it's it's about you at the end of the day. Like, you're not settled with this person yet. Like, go do what you need to do for your career. And if it's a huge advancement, I'm assuming that comes with money. So, like, yes, you'll be able to fly back or figure it out, drive. I don't know how close you all are. But, like, that doesn't seem like that will be, like, a deterrent. So, if they want to make it work, they'll make it work. Also, like, just communicate about it. And that's something Tanner and I, like, say so easily and know that's not the easiest for every person because I mm. know his language and he knows mine. Like yeah. we've known each other for so long. So like it could be harder, but like start trialing like different communications and like ways that you want to express and like how you're feeling. Like, is that better for you through like long form writing? Like when I used to feel misunderstood, I used to like write everything out. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's helpful. like when I used to like struggle with things like that, that's like, I would write everything out before. Like I would like ever vocalize them. Um, yeah. now I don't have that problem, but like, I still do that, but like, I don't have that problem in like relationship with you. No. And like, yeah. I'm just able to vocalize freely and be like, I don't like this. And so like, think about how you want to vocalize it, but yeah, take the job girl. Like, yeah, take, take the, the job. job. When we were first getting together and we knew we were going to like, I knew early, like, I was like, okay, this is like, this is over. Like, this yeah, is we're easy. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to marry this man. Right. And I was offered a new job. That was a big job. Yeah, you were. And, um, it was my dream job. Uh-huh. And I said, I want to be with you, but you are not going to get me the way that you want me. Right. And you said, I'm okay with that. Yeah. And honestly, from my perspective, like I, and I, we talked about this too. I'm like, <coughs> this is your dream job. You have to do it. It's only for a year. Like mm-hmm. that's the contract you signed was for a year. And mm-hmm. so like we'll reevaluate. Yeah. If it's not working for us at the end of that year, like we'll figure something else out. And luckily we did. We did. I actually it wasn't my dream job and um <laughs> I hated it. But I thought yeah. it was my dream job. And right. so like I went for it because you never know until you know. And now I'm feel like I'm still discovering like what my dream job is. Mm. But like at the time it was a dream job. It was a huge raise and it was gonna take me further away from you. Yeah. And like, and by further away, I mean, like I was still physically in Colorado living in our same home, but like, I was not going to be as present. Like there was going to be lots of things where we were looking for something where I could be more present. And so like the person who loves you will choose you yeah, and help you figure that out and like help you reach your dream. So like, mm-hmm. if this is your dream job, like look who's not supporting you right now. And I don't know that I would want them in my life. No. And it ended up not being my dream job, but it's led me to more jobs that feel like my dream job. And it led me to like being able to do this with you. And like, we would have never got that like without that without job. Without trying honestly. it. Yeah. But that job you have like, to go got for me it. to this job. Like, so that's some encouragement for you. Like mm-hmm. do the job, do, do the, the job. work. You can do it. We believe in you. Mm-hmm. You've got this. Yeah. It's going to be okay. And, and it's okay to be wrong if it's not. It's okay to be wrong if it's not. And it's not the end of the world. Like, yeah you're so you're so full of life and like honestly saw your picture you're stunning no like, stunning like break up with this man Hideous. literally <laughs> literally what man girl why yeah. do you need a man no nope, you don't <laughs> <laughs> take care of your bag sis and i have one uh-huh. <laughs> speaking of that's what we're going to be doing a lot of we're going to be packing what? this afternoon oh, yeah yeah packing. i'm going to segue us from like advice to like the wrapping it up piece. Look, we are going you. to be in la the rest of the week i don't know what the podcast schedule is going to look like um, you might get one you might not you'll you know. probably get one like yeah. you might get a weekend up um but we are going out and about it's going to be a great week and um this man was going to be packing my bags the rest of the day so if your yeah. man's not packing your bags for you hello literally dump him dump, dump. him now i'm just kidding dump. you might like to pack your own bags yeah i you might. hate it so yeah because if some man was packing a bag for me i can guarantee he couldn't do it to my standards no literally tanner does do it to pass my standards i'm always like i don't know what's in here but i trust it that's I, like, also barely... like 98 percent of the reason why i paint her nails because she could never paint them as good as me <laughs> <laughs> literally that that is part of it well at the beginning of the nail painting journey yeah. it was because like i was pay- i was like i don't want to go out and get my you were like you can go get your nails done and like right i was like i it was during this time? crazy job yeah it was during this crazy <laughs> job and i was like i Like, I can go get my nails done, but that's going to be two and a half hours without you. Like, do you want to sit with me there? And he was like, no. And so I would do it at home. And he would be like, that's bad. I'll do it for you. And I was like, you think you can do better than me? And he's like, I know I can do better than you. Without a doubt. And it's been four years. So, um, (laughs) listen... Any way to trick your man so you can sit on your ass at home more. That is so you you. coded though, because a funny story about KB, I know we were trying to wrap things up, but my one of my favorite stories is she will deliberately, was it a mower? What was it? What? Whenever you hit something purposefully so you wouldn't have to mow anymore or like weed eat or something. There's like some story there. Weed eating, it's drawing on chalkboards. It's all of it. Like if you do something wrong. Bad enough the first time, like they will never ask or expect you to do it again. (laughs) 
<laughs> I used to say that. I'm like, if you do something wrong the first time, no one will ask you to do it again. <laughs> that is so you. That is just like a it's motto so from KB. Coded. Yeah. Like, who knew my ma- manipulation be working four years later? I got a full <laughs> manicure this weekend. I was crying while I, we started the episode talking about crying while getting my nails done. Yeah. We finished finishing the episode by tricking into Tanner into doing my pedicure once a month for the last four years. Yeah. And here we are. It's okay to be wrong. <laughs> It's okay to be manipulated, some would say. (laughs) (laughs) And if somebody loves you enough, they'll do it. (laughs) Yeah, that's a fact. Big fact. No, literally. So we did actually, we started all this because I was in that wild job Mm -hmm. and I didn't have time to get my nails done. I was working like 18 hour days. Yeah. And um, we didn't get to spend time together. So Tanner started it for me and I was just like, I can't. You think you can do it better? And there he was. But that is my manipulation tactic (laughs) one-on-one. So... Here we are. It's okay to be wrong. Thank you so much for listening today. Yeah. We enjoyed having you and we love having you as a listener. If you have not um, went ahead and followed us on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, wherever you get your podcast, go ahead and follow and do that now. And if you are not following us on Instagram um, go ahead or TikTok, go ahead and follow us there at it's okay underscore to be wrong. All right. Love, love you. you. Bye. Bye.